The Incredible Mineral Wealth of Angola Africa is endowed with abundant mineral resources. The world's population is well known for the tons of mass-produced gold and diamonds that it produces. The fauna in Angola is abundant, but it was severely depleted during the Civil War. The country is also rich in fossil fuels, diamonds, oil, gold, and copper. The most valuable economic resources ever since independence have been oil and diamonds. The Angolan Civil War caused a sharp decline in small-scale and plantation agriculture. Background Despite some accounts of Portuguese shipments of diamonds from Angola, as early as the 18th century, modern industrial diamond mining, as we know it today, didn't start until 1912, when jewels were found in a stream in the northeastern Luanda region. Diamang received the concession for searching and mining for diamonds in 1917. It kept this concession till its independence. In 1977, the government seized control of the business. The state was granted the sole power to explore for and utilize minerals according to a general mining law, Law 5 on 79, that was passed in April 1979. As a result, the government's 77% stake in Diamang was acquired by the National Diamond Company, Impresa Nacional de Diamantes and Diama, a state-owned diamond mining company, which was established in 1981. Umida decided to pursue the diamond mining industry as a primary target, which quickly hampered mining operations. By 1986, the two foreign firms that had been servicing and running the sector withdrew from Angola, and in the middle of that year, Diamang was formally dissolved, leaving significant debts. Diamond sales decreased to 33 million US dollars by 1985 and to an estimated 15 million US dollars in 1986 as a result of attacks by UNITA on mining centers, obstruction of transit routes, rampant theft, and smuggling. Rhone Selection Trust International, a division of Luxembourg registered holding company ITM International, started mining in the Kafunfo region along the Kwango River in late 1986. This is where Angola's most priceless alluvial diamond reserves are located. Following a UNITA raid on the mining camp in February 1984 that resulted in the kidnapping of 77 foreign workers and substantial equipment damage, mining had been put on hold there for more than two years. Defense forces were bolstered in the region following the second kidnapping of a British expatriate in November 1986, permitting the restart of mining operations. Production there had an average of 60,000 carats, 12 kilograms, in 1987. Moreover, the two additional mining regions of Andrada and Lucapat generated roughly 120,000 carats, 24 kilograms, of diamonds. More than 400,000 carats, 80 kilograms, of diamonds were produced in 1986, but by 1987, that number had increased to 750,000 carats, 150 kilograms. The output in 1987, however, was still only slightly higher than that of 1985 and less than half of that in 1980. The price per carat obtained for Angolan diamonds has increased, which has contributed to this growth in production. Production has grown as a result of the Kwango River area's mining activity picking up again and the decrease in thefts of more valuable stones in the Andrada and Lukapa regions measured by value. In addition, the world diamond market has improved generally, and dealers are willing to pay higher prices in the hopes of receiving preferential treatment in the future. Ndiyama, which regulates the sector and holds monthly sales, has profited from these developments. As a result, the average carat value determined by the monthly sales in 1987 topped 110 US dollars, more than double what it was in 1985, and at its highest level since 1981. As a further incentive for new businesses to participate in the diamond mining sector, and in particular, to continue prospecting, the government started revising the 1979 mining law in 1987. The British Lonho Group, which had become increasingly involved in Angola in the late 1980s, was reportedly one of the businesses considering an investment in that year. After losing its exclusive marketing rights for Angolan diamonds at the end of 1985 due to government concerns that De Beers had grossly undervalued Angolan diamonds, the world's largest diamond producer, 
De Beers of South Africa also expressed interest. Due to the depletion of alluvial deposits, De Beers indicated an interest in researching the Kimberlite pipes, which are deep subterranean deposits that are expected to constitute the future of the Angolan diamond industry. Till present day, Angola is the third largest producer of diamonds in Africa, and the country has only explored 40% of its diamond-rich interior. However, due to corruption, breaches of human rights, and diamond smuggling, Angola has struggled to draw in foreign investment. Ndiyama, the National Diamond Corporation of Angola, anticipates that production would raise by 8% in 2007 to reach 10 million carats, 2,000 kilograms, annually, a 30% increase from 2006. Being one of the richest resource markets in the world, with significant deposits of rare earth minerals, iron ore, gold, and diamonds, large-scale mining operations have been established in important basins. The diamond business, which generates $1.2 billion annually and ranks Angola as the second largest producer in Africa, is at the forefront of the nation's mineral wealth. The nation of Southern Africa is already making strides, with various mining ventures moving forward, as it aims to further diversify its economy as a result of increased mineral exploration and production. One of the most important mineral resources in Angola is diamonds. The contemporary diamond mining business in Angola has its beginnings in the colonial era, specifically in 1912, when sizable diamond reserves were discovered close to the Lunda region in the country's northeast. Diamond mining in Angola was done by a private business called Diamang during the colonial era. The government established legislation when the country gained its independence to guarantee that it alone had the authority to use the nation's mineral riches. The National Union for the Total Independence of Angola attacked the diamond mining sector during the Civil War, and as a result, the sector was destroyed. In the most crucial area, near the Kwango River, the organization was able to severely hinder diamond mining. The Kwango River's perimeter was fortified with security measures by the government to battle the organization, allowing mining to recommence there. Following the Civil War, the Angolan government was able to implement various initiatives to support its diamond mining sector. One of the actions it took was to launch the anti-smuggling operation known as Operation Brilliant. More than 250,000 smugglers were apprehended over a three-year period, from 2003 to 2006, making the operation somewhat effective. Prior to the operation, it was believed that the Angolan government had lost $350 million in revenue as a result of diamond smuggling. Some of Angola's mines include 1. Katoka Diamond Mine, targeting 10 million carats. The Katoka Diamond Mine is an open pit mine that has been run by the Sociedad Minera de Katoka since 1993. It is situated in Sarumo City and is jointly owned by the state-owned Diamond Corporation of Angola, Ndiyama, Orosa of Russia, and Lev Lviv International of Israel. Katoka, which is currently responsible for up to 75% of Angola's total diamond production, is the fourth largest diamond mine in the world. Operators currently intend to expand annual production to roughly 10 million carats, considerably strengthening Angola's diamond mining sector, after production was reduced to 2 million carats in 2020 as a result of the COVID-19 agreement. 2. Luax Diamond Mine, 5.7 million carats. The Luax Diamond Mine, which is 20 kilometers from the Katoka Mine, will be run by the Angolan government and the Russian mining corporation Orosa. With the mine, Angola's yearly production of diamonds is expected to rise dramatically to 5.7 million carats by 2023. The Katoka mine's owner, the Sociedad Minera de Katoka, holds 50.5% of Luax, while Ndiyama, Orosa, and local businesses Cicadium, Chela Group, Cayman, and Reform each hold 13% and 6% of the company, respectively. 3. Kamafuka Kamazambo Diamond Mine, 5.1 million carats. The Kamafuka Kamazambo Diamond Mine is jointly held by Canadian-based Southern Era Diamonds and Ndiyama of Angola. It is regarded as one of the largest unexplored kimberlite diamond complexes in the world. 
With reserves of 23,240 million carats and 209 million cubic meters of ore, the mine produces 5.1 million carats yearly. 4. Cutado Iron Ore Mine, 3 million tons. The Cutado Mine in the southeastern province of Cuando Cabango started operations in 2021, reviving Angola's iron ore exports. With an estimated 120 million tons of iron ore, the Cutado mine hopes to export 3 million tons a year when operating at full capacity. The iron ore mine is a component of the Compañía Siderúrgica do Cuchi project, a public-private collaboration between the state-owned Ferangoland, the Cuando Cubango mining firm, and the Modulac Steel Company of Brazil. 5. Cabinda Phosphate Project 450,000 tons the Angolan Ministry of Mineral Resources, Petroleum and Gas granted Minbo's Resources, an Australian-based phosphate mining firm, a mining license in June 2020 for the Cabinda Phosphate Project. The Cicada High-Grade Phosphate Deposit, a planned open pit mine, stockpiles of waste and ore, and all related infrastructure are all included in the project. For the first year of operations in 2023, 150,000 tons per year are anticipated, with the potential to increase to 450,000 tons in the future. 6. Lunhinga Diamond Mine, 240,000 carats. The Lunhinga Mine, which is situated in the eastern province of London Nordi, wants to increase monthly production capacity from 10,000 to 20,000 carats. The concession area for the project is roughly 32,500 hectares. 7. Quitota Manganese Mine, 120,000 tons. The Malangi Province's Quitota Manganese Mine plans to produce 10,000 tons of manganese on average per month. The mining activities, which have 12 million tons of deposits, will be carried out in two stages, the open stage and the subterranean stage. 8. Longanjo Rare Earth Project, 56,000 tons. The Longanjo Rare Earths Project, which spans 21 square kilometers, is located near the town of Longanjo in central Angola. Longanjo Neodymium Prasodymium Project is an open pit mine producing neodymium and prasodymium located in the African nation of Angola. Pensana Metals fully owns the project and is developing it at a capital cost of 168.4 million pounds, which equates 131 million dollars. 9. Lulo Diamond Mine, 46,000 carats. About 46,000 carats are produced annually in the Lulo Diamond Mine in London Nordic Province, Angola, or 4,300 carats on average every month. Diamonds from Lulo include luxury varieties. Four diamonds weighing over 100 carats each were retrieved during internal checks of gems. The largest diamond ever found in Angola, at 404 carats, was also one of the remarkable recoveries. 10. Bukoza Gold Mine, approximately 104.31 kilograms. Situated in Cabinda Province, Angola's Bukoza mine sold 15 kilograms of gold from its secondary deposit, marking the country's first gold mining revival in almost half a century. Benefits to Angola and the world China is Angola's largest trading partner, fourth largest source of imports, and destination for exports. In 2011, bilateral commerce increased by 11.5% year over year to $27.67 billion. The increase in China's imports, which primarily consisted of crude oil and diamonds, to $24.89 billion came at the expense of a 38.8% increase in the country's exports to Angola, which included mechanical and electrical goods, machinery components, and building supplies. Due to the oversupply of oil, unleaded gasoline cost 0.37 pounds a gallon in the local market. Growing oil income also provided chances for corruption. Between 2007 and 2010, 32 billion US dollars vanished from government coffers, according to a recent Human Rights Watch analysis. Moreover, Sonangol, the state-run oil corporation, is in charge of 51% of the oil produced in Cabinda. Because of this market power, the government's profit and tax burden are ultimately decided by the firm.
According to the Council of Foreign Affairs, the World Bank noted that Sanangol is a taxpayer, engages in quasi-fiscal activities, invests public funds, and regulates the industry as a concessionaire. A potential growth sector for the nation is agriculture and forestry. According to the group African Economic Outlook, Angola needs 4.5 million tons of grain annually, but only produces roughly 55% of the maize, 20% of the rice, and 5% of the wheat that is needed. We hope you learned a lot from this video and enjoyed it as well. Do well to subscribe, turn on notifications, like, comment, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.